So welcome to this educational session on ESRS E5, resource use and circular economy. Before explaining to you what is this standard about, I would like to start with a little quote from the EU Circular Economy Action Plan, which states that the EU's transition to a circular economy is a prerequisite to achieve the EU's 2050 climate neutrality target and to halt biodiversity loss. So this is really stated as one key priority um, in the sustainable finance policy, in the CSRD, of course, but also the taxonomy re regulation and the SFDR PAA with two PAA in relation to circular economy and resource use. This standard is um, articulated around two sections. The first section is about impact, risk and opportunities management with a process to identify material arrows when it comes to resource use and circular economy, which has to be read in conjunction with ESRS 2, um, with an outcome around the list of business units um, for which there is material arrows, the list and prioritization of material resources, and the arrows of transitioning or not transitioning to a circular business model. The LEAP approach around location, evaluation, assessment and preparation also has um, to be considered uh, to make sure we are consistent with the other environmental standards, uh, location uh, aspects regarding uh, waste or uh, resource use uh, may um, be relevant. The uh, second uh, chapter is around the policies which address the material arrows and the actions and resources in relation to those policies and material arrows. Regarding the actions, they are articulated around the waste hierarchy. Um, the waste hierarchy, which is about prevention, preparing for use, recycling and other requiry, um, and finally disposal. And it is also important to consider collective actions for this subtopic. The second section is around metrics and targets. So the targets have to be disclosed uh, in relation to the material arrows again, and whether and how they were adopted has to be specified. There is also a link with scientific evidence here to reflect what is required by the CSRD itself. In terms of specific metrics, we have the resource inflows and resource outflows about products and material with quantitative, qualitative information which is required for all undertaking about those inflows and outflows. And for a certain number of uh, priority sectors and companies active in those priority sectors, which are defined in the EU Circular Economy Action Plan, there is also quantitative information which is required about those products and those uh, services um, regarding, for instance, the weight and percentage of um, products that are designed along circular economy principles and for inflows it will be the weight from regenerative sources or um, the weight of reused or recycled uh, products that have been used. In outflows, so there is the products and services that come out of the undertaking and also the waste. In terms of waste, what is required are the tones of waste and a breakdown by recovery operation and by waste treatment which is um, very much inspired from GRI. Finally, the standards cover the potential financial effects with a three-year transitional period for the implementation um, regarding quantitative information, which is required and less impracticable, and a lot of contextual information, which is also required, and this reminder that when a single amount is hard to reach, it can be a range of amounts to explain those potential financial effects. I hope this helps you better understand uh, this standard. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>